if I had my way, everything would be so nice. This world would be like Paris. No, it would be a paradise. No one would ever have to say, I'm going to get my wish someday. All one would have to do is say, this is my order, if you may. Welcome to another episode of The School Without Walls. I'm Antonio Hobbs, founder, and uh, uh, this particular program. Uh, my guest today is a student here at the University of Arkansas, here at Pine Bluff, called Tariq Balderos. We're going to talk today about the uh, gully people. Yes. And the uh, gully slash... Um, Geechee. Geechee. But before we get into that, I want to say to the general public, we're talking about black history after February with the idea of trying to encourage the African-American community to continue teaching your children about the history and culture in as much as this is the only ethnic group that I know of that doesn't have a good knowledge of their own history and culture. So it's our responsibility. Now, uh, Mr. Balderos, tell us, tell us whatever you have researched about the Gully people, which is a lot of good information, I'm sure. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, the Gullah Geechee culture is uh, derived from Angola and uh, Senegambia in Western Africa. And uh, they believe that the term Gullah comes from Gola, which is the uh, ch predominant tribe in Angola. So from Gola, they got Gullah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Geechee is supposed to be an American-based name uh, based on the Ogeechee River mm -hmm. in Georgia. It goes mm -hmm. into Florida also. Mm -hmm. And they believe that's where the name came from. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gullah and Geechee people uh, were essentially West Africans who, uh, through isolation uh, in the rice fields of Georgia and also northern Florida, were able to preserve a lot of their own culture as well as a uh, myriad of other African cultures to uh, basically form their own language and their own customs that are closer, closely tied to Africa and much more closely tied than any other uh, ethnic group of Africans in America has ever had mm -hmm. or experienced. Mm -hmm. Now, what were some of the reasons that they were able to stay pretty well separated from the uh, white Americans? What, what happened? Do you remember? Yes, uh, the tropical diseases uh, such as malaria and yellow fever, mm -hmm. which had uh, hit Africa sometime previous to America, uh, eventually made their way to America through the transatlantic travel from Europe and Africa. Mm -hmm. And what they found is that the slaves from West Africa, being that they had already experienced that disease, were able to handle it better mm -hmm. than the white Europeans or even the Native American Indians, mm -hmm. who were also very susceptible to it. So. Uh, they brought the Western Africans over, and uh, they were able to uh, handle the lowlands of South Carolina and Florida. Mm -hmm. And what they found out was that those people also were skilled in the uh, cultivation of rice. Mm -hmm. And it's been believed by anthropologists that that region has been cultivating rice uh, for about 3,000 years. Mm -hmm. So they brought even more of them over uh, through the uh, Bunce Island. A castle. They're essentially dungeons, but they call them castles. Mm -hmm. And they, they've documented and tracked that all of the ones that became Gullah came from this one particular island, uh, castle, dungeon. And they were brought over essentially to cultivate the rice. And they were so skilled at it that they were uh, given some degree of autonomy, which, is, which was really important to preserving their customs mm -hmm. as well as, you know, harvesting the rice. Right. Now, I'd like to just add to that. They brought the rice too, but prior to that, rice was not raised in the in the USA. So they brought rice to this country. What I found is that uh, yes, they did bring rice. Mm -hmm. Originally, the mm -hmm. Europeans brought it over. They were not able to get it going. Right. They, and they kept having to bring more rice, and right. it's sort of like a folly where you you keep messing up and you keep bringing more resources, and you're just sort of. Um, you're going through a vicious cycle. And mm. once they brought the Africans in the African wild rice, mm. is, I mean, it's no different than any other rice, but they put the term wild on it. Mm. They brought that rice from West Africa and the slaves who were skilled in it. And then the, uh, they were able to yield much larger crops uh, throughout Southern South Carolina, Eastern Georgia, as well as North Florida down to uh, Jacksonville. Right. 
And for those who might not understand the farming process of rice, rice requires a lot of water. So yes. they had plenty of water in that part where the fever was. Yes. So therefore the, the Africans had the opportunity to stay separated from the mainland for a while because of yes. the fever, right? So that, as you said earlier, caused them to maintain their, much of their language, certainly much of their culture, and to this very day, right? I understand yes. there's about a quarter of a million people in the Isles now speak primarily Gullah, the yes, oldest people. Yes, they consider they, themselves yeah. Gullah Geechee. Right. Yeah. Um, and and uh, this is something else that I've learned from my own experience. There are a lot of Gullah people that don't know, know their own origin. I've right. talked with right. Geechee people that didn't know they was connected with Gullah because it's not in the public school system. And they eventually move away from that right, region. Right. So this is very important for the whole nation to understand, especially those people whose origin is Gullah. They say they call us Geechee. I've talked with them back in the day. Mm -hmm. But you know, why do they call you Geechee? I don't know. But now they will know there's a connection between the Gullah people of the islands and the Geechee people who came from the islands into the main into land. Into the main land. And went to school and became educated scholars, professors. And when we come back after the break, we, we could talk about some of the uh, famous people who are, whose origin yes. is Geechee Gullah. They, they have quite a few uh, notable a few residents people. of that region and also people of that ancestry. Right. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. When I was six, my days were spent playing basketball. When I was six, my dream was to make it to the NBA. When I was six, my mom had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to spot a stroke fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke fast. Those of you who have just joined us, I'm Antonio Hobbs, host and founder of this educational program called The School Without Walls. And uh, my guest today is a student here at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, Mr. Tariq Alderos. And uh, he's done some research on the Gullah slash Geechee people. And the first uh, part of this program, we were talking about their origin. Now we're going to talk about some noted persons that are of that uh, origin that you might not know. Uh, the, mo the most famous one, would you start with uh, one of them? Which, which, which um, one would well, you say? Well, the, the most notable person mm -hmm. of Gullah Geechee ancestry would be Smokin' Joe Frazier. Smokin', very popular. Um, who is very uh, notable, mm -hmm. uh, fighting, world-renowned prize fighter, mm -hmm. uh, known for being the arch foil to Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. um, his, he was raised, I believe, in South Carolina, mm -hmm. but his people are descendants of the Geechee and Gullahs. Uh, they were originally from that area. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came back several times, but he didn't have as close of a tie uh, to them as then. I don't think we really appreciated the Gullah Geechee culture until somewhere in the 80s. That's correct. And at that point, he had already, he was a full grown man, mm -hmm. if not a middle aged man at that point. Right. But Joe Frazier uh, was Gullah Geechee, mm -hmm. a recent winner of American Idol. Her name is Candace Glover. I, I don't watch American Idol personally, mm -hmm. but she she's a Gullah Geechee and proud of it and mm -hmm. does a lot of different events where she speaks on her ancestry. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a football player. His last name is Bailey. Uh, I, his first name has slipped my mind, but he's a current NFL player. And he's also embroiled in a, a, a bit of a property war in a place called Hog Hammock, which is on Sapello Island in Georgia, which is part of the Gullah Geechee region. Mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to price the guys out, the people out from over there. There's only about 100 Gullah living on this island, mm -hmm. but they want it all. So uh, he's fighting they, for that. What, what are you talking, you talking the about? State government, the state government wants to take all of the land. Mm -hmm. uh, but the Gullahs have been living there, uh, they, they say, for at least uh, four or five generations. Right. So if you add that out, that's about 100 years or so. Mm -hmm. So that's Bailey, that's Glover, uh, Frazier. You also, uh, most people wouldn't realize that the first elected black person into Congress was Gullah. He, right. he was even representing that region. Mm -hmm. And uh, his name was Joseph Rainey. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people know Hiram Revels as the first black elected official, but he didn't actually get elected. He was sort of chosen mm -hmm. by uh, 
I guess you would say the people who came in that was to right the after South reconstruction. right after uh, they were, reconstruction. They were appointing more or less. But Joseph was Rainey was actually elected. elected. People voted, and he got in through that. He was the first person to preside over a branch of Congress, mm -hmm. and um, he's uh, one of the forgotten heroes of Black culture. But uh, Joseph Rainey, also uh, Philip Reed who was a master craftsman, and he uh, built the uh, Statue of Freedom, which is atop the U.S. Capitol. Mm -hmm. uh, it was built by him. Ar he was also the architect of it, so um, he's also a noted person of Gullah Geechee ancestry. And then there are two people who are sort of, their stories are intertwined mm -hmm. by the name of Denmark Vesey mm -hmm. and Gullah Jack. Mm -hmm. Denmark Vesey uh, was a former slave. He actually won his freedom through a lottery. I don't mm. know how that worked. It, there's really no details, but some sort of lottery, he was able to mm. buy his freedom. Well, back in those days, some could buy it, so he won some money somewhere, I guess. He won, it, they say lottery. Mm -hmm. he, so, I don't know what kind of lottery it was, but he won his freedom, mm -hmm. and he moved to Philadelphia and helped to uh, be a part of the foundation of the first black AME church of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. But he was compelled to come back and help his people. And uh, with the help of another man by the name of Gullah Jack, who was sort of a mythical, mythical figure in the Gullah area. He was a conjurer. Um, he has African roots. He was a slave, also a Methodist. Mm -hmm. And he was also a pirate. And he was African Methodist, too. Yes. It's different than just Methodist and African Methodist. African Methodist, Methodist. African exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the two mm -hmm. of them organized um, what should have been the largest, um, a large-scale revolt. Mm -hmm. uh, riot, however you want to term it, rebellion, and the two of them had it set up. It was believed to uh, encompass about 4,500 slaves. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the what, plan. What year was that? You say? What, um, did you get a date? No, I did not. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I believe. Um, let's see, 1822. Yes, I did have a date. 1822. 1822. Okay. So you're saying Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm was the unofficial end of slavery mm -hmm. when, and that's about 30 years after that. So mm -hmm. um, this is maybe 28 years before um, the official, the unofficial end of slavery mm -hmm. and about 25 years previous to, uh, was it John Brown, Brown's raid, which mm -hmm. is sort of the end of the abolitionist period. Right. So the two of them got together. Denmark Vesey was the political guy. Gullah Jack was sort of the people's hero who could sort of be the you know, somebody's got to be the lightning rod of it. Mm -hmm. And the two of them got together and they started what they called the Rising. Mm -hmm. And uh, the rising? unfortunately, yes, the Rising, but with the Southern Bent, it would have been the Rising. Mm -hmm. And that's how they have it written. Mm -hmm. And the two of them got together. Unfortunately, days before it was to happen, uh, people got word of it and the two of them were hung. And um, last year, Denmark Vesey was honored with his own statue. Is that by, right? by the state. So by the, the state, state recognized that while he was doing an act against the state, mm -hmm. it was for a good cause. Right. And, you know, the line gets blurry with what's right and wrong and what's legal and illegal. Mm -hmm. So he but now he has a statue. To free himself, wasn't yes, he? free himself. Yes, free him. He was free. Trying to free his That's people. That's the thing. Denmark Vesey was free. Mm -hmm. He was trying to free his people. He came back to free his people. He had a successful church and everything mm -hmm. in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. He came back. Gullah Jack was there. And unfortunately, they were killed. Mm -hmm. But they have a statue, and um, people recognize Which that city he was. Which is that in? The statue is in Charleston. All right, let us stop on that note. Uh, statue in, in Charleston of what was his name? Denmark Vesey. Denmark Vesey. That sounds like a French name. It Den does. Yep. Sort of Denmark like a, when I hear it, it sounds like a Jamaican person. Mm -hmm. But that again would be a French name. Right. Right. Yeah. We'll be back in just a few minutes. <laughs> Donating it to Goodwill may be the most incredible of all. Your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community, which means your stuff can be more powerful than you think. Donate stuff, create jobs. 
Give me back! They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Those of you who have just joined us, I'm Antonio Hobbs, host and founder of this educational program called The School Without Walls, and our theme at this time is uh, Black History after February, wanting to involve our people in the importance of preparing your ch children to know their own history. And before I get back to my guests, uh, let's remember Dr. Carter G. Woodson, who is the founder of the idea back in the 30s. He started off some way of getting one week, and we've only moved three weeks since that time. Yep. And we here at the School Without Walls feel that it's time for us to move forward. We're talking about the Gullah Geechee people, a very important uh, segment of African American uh, African Americans today. And uh, my guest again is Tariq uh, Balderos, student here at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Would you continue talking about, you want to talk about the language the, yes. uh, of the Gullah Geechee people? Okay. The Gullah Geechee people's uh, language is properly, properly referred to as Sea Island Creole. Mm -hmm. um, it's sort of a relative of both Barbadian and Bahamian dialect, mm -hmm. as well as Jamaican Patois. And also, um, what am I missing? The Trinidadian um, Creole. Mm -hmm. So it's a blend of those. They're all sort of mixed slave European based languages. Mm -hmm. And the Sea Island Creole, which we now know as Geechee, is uh, what Gullahs speak. And mm -hmm. they're, it's, they all share similarities, but uh, the Gullahs is the most in depth because they had the most time of isolation from European people. You have to understand, the Europeans were sort of leave them the keys to the plantation right. and go off and they back to the... They it back right. in that day because of the fever. They would go back to the urban areas mm -hmm. in Charleston and leave the coast and the rice coast in that area mm -hmm. for the gullahs to handle. Right. That's sort of how it worked. Mm -hmm. um, there was actually a revolt that got started to a certain extent because of um, the slaves sort of being on their own. It's called Igbo's Landing. Mm -hmm. Igbo was not... They don't believe he was gullah. Mm -hmm. But he was the master of the plantation, and the plantation peoples were Gullah. Mm -hmm. That uh, uprising was suppressed as well, but it did go underway, mm -hmm. as opposed to the one Denmark Vesey did, which, is, which was of a larger scope, but it didn't happen. It got stopped in its tracks. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, they were allowed to speak their own language and handle their own business. And the slaves that would come to that area would also be sort of absorbed and indoctrinated into the culture and would also supply whatever culture they still had. So you have to understand the Gullah Geechee culture isn't just the culture of the, those specific tribes, such as the Wolof and the Madinka mm -hmm. and the Fula, which were uh, of Angola, mm -hmm. but also of other Western Africans who yeah. would come there and have their customs, and they were respected there because it wasn't any um, European interference or dilution taking, mm -hmm. in, taking place. And I noticed in Nigeria, Ghana, Ivory Coast, and all of those were connected with rice too. They all were all those. called the Rice Coast, yeah, also that, yeah. the Windward Coast. Mm -hmm, right. But uh, that's that's how that's with the purpose of in, slavery in West Africa. In right? West, West Africa, Africa. All, all against Nigeria and mm -hmm. all those other mm -hmm. smaller places. Mm -hmm. And if you really look at that area, it's still only now being formed out. They're changing names of countries every decade or so. Mm -hmm. So you know you have Burkina Faso over there where that didn't exist 50 years ago. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of change and everything seems to be in flux over there. They're only now starting to make the connection between Western Africa and those tribes and the Gullah people. Uh, it's been documented uh, in a uh, documentary called The Language You Cry In, mm -hmm. and they were able to set up the Gullah Geechee people with the various tribes from West Africa, and particularly Sierra Leone, and have them to sort of coalesce and get to know each other. It's actually a very... Uh, emotional scene when they actually meet each other. If mm -hmm. you haven't seen it, I would encourage everyone to check it out. It's only about 30 minutes. So. On television? Yeah, you can find it on YouTube. On the, YouTube. The Language You Cry In. 
The language you cry in. Okay, right. I'll make a note of that. The language you cry in. All right, you may continue. Um, Anything else? Most of the Gullah, uh, they believe 40% are from Angola. It's amazing, they actually do have records. This Bunce Island, the records are pretty clear as to where the people were coming from. Also, um, another 30% came from what was then Senegambia, mm -hmm. which is essentially Senegal and Gambia, mm -hmm. before they were sort of anglicized. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where those people came from, and they were dealing with rice, and they were dealing with the diseases. So, and to be frank, they were also already dealing with slavery. Mm -hmm. Slavery was there before the Europeans got there. Mm -hmm. So they had already, they basically were adaptable. They were the most adaptable of the Africans, at least uh, on the western half of the continent. Mm -hmm. And so when they got here, they were pretty much left to their own devices. There's a low amount of, um, lynching mm -hmm. and also violence against the Gullah people. They really were an isolated group mm -hmm. unto themselves and um, even the masters and whatnot respected them as much and allowed them to their own devices, mm -hmm. really. Okay, how much more time we have? Uh, a couple more minutes. Let's go into this uh, congressman. Uh, let's try to close out with uh, Clayburn. Okay, uh, Clyburn, Cly uh, Clyburn. Congressman Clyburn is uh, currently uh, proposing a Geechee Gullah Cultural Heritage Act, mm -hmm. which would uh, supply the area, what they call the historical corridor for Gullahs along that area from mm -hmm. South Carolina to Florida with uh, what they would call um, National Historic Landmarks. It would, it would be protected. Right. Um, there are 11 endangered sites that are part of that area. And by endangered, they're not endangered from nature, they're endangered from commerce. Right. Uh, people want that land, it's prime real estate. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe back in the day, disease was a problem and the water and whatnot, but with technology, those aren't problems. Right. And slowly but surely, in, they're, they're starting to try to take the land over. Mm -hmm. I won't say back, but taking the land taking over. It over. right. And so he's, and he's, he's been involved with trying to uh, keep, keep the land sort of sacred. And, and uh, if, if the, anyone's gonna own it, to allow them to own it, if they choose to lease it out, which they were doing originally in Hog Hammock. Mm -hmm. Hog Hammock being this small sort of enclave that's part of Sepelo Island mm -hmm. in Georgia. Um, that would have been fine if they were just allowed to lease the land out to the college people or vacationers or whatnot. Mm -hmm. But essentially the state is saying, we want the land, period. Right. And property taxes in Hog Hammock went from $800 to $6,500. Mm -hmm. And so what, what you see there is there's no reason for that. There's no school on this. There's, it, the taxes really aren't paying for anything. They just are sort of pricing these people out. They want to turn it into resorts. They want to turn it into results. Resorts. And the Gullah were already leasing it out for that reason, mm -hmm. which goes to show you even when you try to appease uh, the, the group that's oppressing you, they want it all. They want it it's all. It's no fun if you can't have it all. Right. So that's, that's kind of where we're left with that. Also, um, there's also we, a community. We, we, we got to cut down. Okay, here. excuse me. We got to cut down here. It's uh, perhaps another time we'll come back again yeah, because this that's is very fine. good. Glad to have you with us. Thank you. Okay. All right, then uh, we're going to.